What is good? My pop. Cool, fresh pops. Felt like I had a decent one there. I'll, 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 I'm in the six, maybe six, six, two, six, three there. I think we got to dock a per- smidge of a percentage points with the remote necessity of this uh, this call here. I'm on the road here. I'm, uh, I'm out of I'm out of the den. I'm out of the dojo. <sighs> I got, got uh, I got my little, boy Brad hanging it, holding it down here though with me. Yeah, Brad's Brad's holding it down in my spot. I'm I'm on the road. Didn't want to miss it. Didn't want to miss a, a show here. So uh, we're gonna keep this train rolling. Gonna keep the bipod rolling. Our our esteemed colleague over there, Mr. Wayne, uh, maybe um, he's expecting a second uh, little one at any point. Any and, day um, now. She held off. She was like, you know what? You guys need to do one more rookie prospect you know get one more in before uh before it's too late yeah i got having some technical difficulties on the road over here lost the light lost the light literally sat here for an hour bullshitting and now we lost the light all right we're back what's good i'm your man casey that's jay wayne we got our third installment of rookie profiles here sticking with the wide receivers um, we got Mr. Garrett Wilson today, uh, but be sure to subscribe. We got other content besides just rookie profiles, as well as keeping it coming with all the top prospects. We're going to do some, uh, ADP action, try to keep that updating monthly. We got some, uh, early off season targets. We're going to talk about some of, uh, last year's incoming rookie classes and, and, and how they finished their first NFL season. So we got all that kind of stuff. So be sure to subscribe so you can keep getting all this Good content right to your fingertips. You ready to roll? You ready to get it? Let's do it. All right. So Garrett Wilson's the man of the hour. He's six foot. A little discrepancy on some weights around here. What do you uh what do you got him at there, Mr. Jay's Waynes? Weight 105. <laughs> yeah, in your bra. Okay, I don't know. I, I'm going 183. He was listed at 188 at one point. I'm not exactly sure which one's which. Yeah. All right. Saw fine, maybe 180. Fine. I'm 127. <laughs> <laughs> Saw maybe 181 coming out of college, coming out of high school. Probably a little 188 ish, 185, 186 ish is kind of what I'm seeing. So maybe combine ish will be 190, 188 somewhere in there. Hopefully. Mm-hmm. Um. So. Uh, but 21 years old, uh, five-star old. recruit. <laughs> I'm on it. I'm on it. Does does seem uh, not really sure why he's. I know. Only went to college for three years, but is still going to be 22 before this next season starts. So yeah, another, just like Traylon, just, just a little old. Maybe just a late starter there. Uh, but a five-star recruit at a Lake Travis High School. That's a, that's a, a breeding ground down there. Um, and so this guy's always been a highly sought-after kind of guy. He had offers from all the top schools, as you would guess, Bama, Texas, UGA, UGA, uh, Florida, OU, Notre Dame, Oregon. Could have could have really went anywhere. And and for, you know, the Ohio State crew to go down and pluck him out of Texas, um, strong, strong maneuvers there. You know, Texas hasn't been as strong as, as normal, but guy could have went anywhere. And, and just this is the kind of guy that we're talking about right now. He's always been a highly touted prospect and, and one that, you know, people are holding in high regard right now. Big time. You got any uh, recruiting uh, stories for, for us or are you ready to move on? I did find an interesting quote from Garrett Wilson on Coach Meyer. You know, he said, because he was real excited to come and play for Urban Meyer in, the, in that first year, 2019, was when he was suspended and ultimately left the team. Uh, but he said, he said, you see him on TV and you feel like you know him, but you don't know him until you've talked to him. My parents love him and I already feel comfortable handing me over to him when it's time to go to college. And I was comfortable as well. I'd say he was the game breaker. Do we insert like a Urban Meyer Jafar with a snake staff kind of thing going on here? Because, you know, I, I from everything I've read, Garrett Wilson, strong, strong character, good, hardworking dude in high school, didn't, you know, didn't go wakeboarding with his boys because he was trying to protect his mittens and his hands and 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 do the right thing and and there's a bunch of stuff of him putting in good work but like mm, that calls it into question a little bit as a, a yeah. suspect quote because yeah. urban sucks i just want to throw a little urban shade out there <laughs> urban shade out there i mean uh 
Mr. Wilson, Garrett Wilson here was a three, three sport athlete from, from what I was reading and, and, a, and a pretty strong basketball player as well. Uh, but uh, out here just slaying it in the, in the foosballs. So uh, let's get into the numbers and the, and the counting side and the metric side of things. If you want to do the honors here, we'll hit the metrics. Jay. Right. Added a little, a little few more metrics for your pleasure. I know the big ones, Dominator and Breakout Age. Those are in the mid fifties. The I, I can't imagine people love that. Uh, we'll we'll get into some context as per usual on this show uh, a little bit later, but not not spectacular numbers. Did have a decent yards per reception uh, in 2021 with 16.8. That's that was decent but still only 77th percent oh, that's in the 77th percentile i believe right there um not ranked 77th uh but then you know decent yards per route run with 3.0 uh and that ranked 12th in the nation and and a, and a his a dot was 11.6 which is good for 30th so it, i think definitely wanted up above the double digits uh but you know nothing nothing amazingly crazy from the metrics just uh just kind of all around okay, but you know yeah, that, you, I don't think that's talk- any reason to for us to get discouraged here. But we do want to bring uh, the metrics yeah. to the table. He has played both inside and out. And when you go back to that those 20, 20 numbers, when he was in the slot, those yards per route run go up to three point eight six. So that would probably move him up a little higher um, in in that discussion, which is already pretty high. So you know when he was get out there running from the slot with getting a little more uh, takeoff and maybe a little bit more free release and having to do so much uh, shifting around at the line there with those stutter steps. Uh, maybe maybe was getting a little bit more yards per route run, but still impressive. Uh, where are you at here? A dot. Yeah, I got I got through that. We're we're through that. Do you want to? Do you have any more comments on the metrics? We can move to the to the the counting stats. Yeah, let's let's count them up. All right. Looking at this graphic here, you know nothing really pops out to the eye nothing screams like this is amazing these are kind of kind of average i mean a, a lot of targets in 2021 and you love seeing you know the, the yards per reception is pretty good but just the the overall numbers compared to this guy's reputation and where a lot of people have him you might think mm, not a lot of not a lot popping here what i would say that's pretty amazing is is the uh the slot percentage uh in 2020 seeing him go there 73 percent of the time is uh pretty amazing and 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 just speaks to the overall versatility that this guy has um and then i'm gonna run some tape here for you but you know the career stats down there at the bottom another thing that pops out would be the 11 drops um because there's a ton of amazing catches on film and like the his ability to go outside his frame and snatch balls as well as the contest to catch rate um is pretty pretty dang strong um w- would you agree case and, and then you know what's your take on these overall stats yeah i mean like you said that play, plays okay in, in 19 as a, as a freshman there and he's out wide but then he moves to the slot and he's only they only play those six regular season games and then two uh i believe postseason games there so puts together a, a, a really solid season in 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 that regard of playing those few amount of games and then you know the eye-popping numbers here is the touchdowns in 2021 and the target amount um at at 102 which you like to see that that's that's you know not the worst and and keeps up that yards per reception where he went from you know 16.8 to 15.1 but saw you know almost double the amount of targets um in from 2020 out of the slot to 2021 uh so uh that's i think that's that's all pretty solid but like you said it's not um it's not maybe as eye popping as you might think it would be for somebody who's garnered as much uh respect for maybe possibly being the wide receiver one in this class right right especially with some of these amazing catches you're seeing like the, the these numbers don't necessarily do the top parts of his film justice if you will yeah i think that's a fair statement all right well let's let's get into some of the advanced stats for 2021 because this is what gets me a little bit more excited is is and Woo. we've we've touched on it is is the yak and the contested Woo. catchability yeah. for this man right is 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 a lot stronger than you would think for someone who's known as like a precision route runner and wins with footwork and whatnot so like to see the yak per reception be at 6.0 and then to see the contested catches uh you know be tied for six with contested catch rate while also forcing 19 missed tackles. Those are just really strong, really strong stats. 
at least his best looking stats anyways trying to cherry pick what what would make the best argument for this dude and I'm going to roll some of this film here to show you his yak ability because that's one of one of my favorite aspects of his game he's not he's not Traylon and he, and he's probably not London Drake but he's still you know with 5.6 6 yard yak per reception is is really really strong for one season yeah, and, and, you know, you go back to that 20, uh, 20 season when he was in the slot, that was an even better number at, at uh, the, the yards per oh, – sorry, that was the yards per route run. Uh, the yards per route run really uh, where he was pretty good this year at 3.0. He was at 3.86 in, in 2020. Uh, so that's that was pretty strong. And then maybe a little Tylen Wallace from last year in the contested catch rate mm. where he's tied for sixth. Uh, and also, you know, not really being the biggest guy, right? Uh, but showing off that athleticism and and not tallest or thickest, uh, really guy, and really showing off the athleticism there uh, with the with the arrogant hands and the uh, <laughs> uh, strong body control and, and leaping ability. You know, when you watch that Clemson uh, game, you can see I mean, when he was a freshman that don't that remind me that everybody's seen. Uh, so that just kind of showing off that that crazy uh, leaping ability that he has there, which which we were diagnosing that play to see exactly how far off the ground he was. He, he gets some help. The he DB a little help. Kinda, the DB kinda, definitely kind of lifts him up a little bit, but he's still it's like, almost like a cheerleading move, right? Uh, you know. Yeah. Gosh, what Three, a what, four he, down up. He really he really crushed Clemson. That was a bummer of a uh, yeah. time there. But uh, yeah, I mean, anything else stat wise, or you want to get into the film? Uh, missed tackles forced, uh, tied for 12th. I don't know if you said that one. Yeah, 19. 19 so. Love that. I mean, yeah, the, the dude is slippery. You know, you just you saw it right there. And if you listen on the podcast, that's why you need to head over to YouTube so you can see some of these see some of these plays and see what we're talking about. All right, let's let's head over to the film side of things, get some opinion of what we think of this guy, show you some uh, what he's doing on the field and uh, get to the get to the fun part. All right. A nice little segue into this is we were kind of talking about those numbers and, and maybe not being as gaudy as maybe you think they might be for uh, the respect and the accolades and the, uh, you know, platform, the pedestal that maybe some people kind of have them on. But we're going to throw some context into that and, and talk a little bit of Ry- about Ryan Day and, and what the hell else is the ecosystem. Uh, Ooh, nice. Shout out to Angelo. Yeah, I'll drink to that. Take a little sipper. Um, so Ryan Day obviously was was underneath um, Urban Meyer here and, and really widely regarded as a, as a strong offensive mind in the uh, collegiate ranks here and, and maybe even getting some pro love here. Maybe some Chicago mm. Bears action. He's in the name's been in that hat. And I know uh, I there. I know I referenced uh, Garrett Wilson's uh, quote about Urban Meyer and be excited to come in there, but I also watched an interview of, of once Urban was gone and what his you know whether he was going to stay committed to Ohio State or whatever, and he was like, "Well, Ryan Day's still there, and the offensive coordinator's still there, and I, you know, those are those guys heavily recruited me, and and uh, you know, I'm I, I'm I'm willing to stick it out. If it, I think he was like, as long as they make Ryan Day the head coach or something like that, he's not he's right. not going to worry yeah. about his commitment or anything. So people know where he's at. No, love, love, love the coach and, and love his mind. Um, and he kind of he was he was at New Hampshire with Chip Kelly. He was his quarterback. So he's and he's had a lot spent a lot of time in the pros with Chip Kelly. So he's been around that whole kind of system and that offense kind of fast, quick, finding the mismatches, moving quickly. And he's also been at places like Boston uh, College, where it's been a bit more pro style with play action and uh, grinding it out. So he's kind of a pretty well-versed. He understands a lot of different schemes. He understands how to work the field, um, which is, you know, kind of where he gets his um, reputation from. Um, And then, you know, just kind of going in some quotes here with, with Ryan day, he, to quote, he says, I think kind of the art of coaching college football is adjusting your scheme to utilize the personnel that you have at the moment. Um, We recruit the best players and we adjust the scheme uh, and that's the coach's job to put them in the best position to be successful. Uh, we have certain philosophies. They don't change, but the way you get there sometimes does, uh, whether it's one tight end, two tight ends, four wide outs, uh, it changes year after year, how you attack coming out of the gates. Uh, and you want to put your guys in best position to succeed. Also, you know, with your offensive line, what style is that offensive line? What kind of backs do you have? What kind of quarterbacks do you have? 
Uh, so then you evolve. You don't just uh, say, here's our system and we're plugging guys in. You adapt year to year. And I think that's kind of important to understanding what's going on at Ohio State. He's not just going to stick with the same thing going on and on. This is the first year with C.J. Stroud. Uh, so they had a little bit of growing pains. And then you could see by the end of the season, Stroud was looking uh, fucking awesome. Uh, he had just come off of two seasons with uh, Justin Fields and, and then Haskins before that. Um, so yeah, I love hearing that. I mean, so many while. times, so many times like these coaches just try to force players into their system and it's like, why, why don't you hear more of this? You know, and that is right. becoming more of the norm where it's like, you gotta, you gotta tailor your offense to these dudes. And I mean, and they have some dudes, they have dudes all over, right? Just exactly. So many so, fucking dudes. The reason I'm kind of saying this is to set the scene. This is a QB friendly offense. Uh, he's excellent at getting the matchup that he wants in one on one situations from this great mind that he has. Um, and then on top of that, um, he builds the offense around the talent and the skill set that those players possess. So he can, you know, kind of mold that from year to year. And then we got a great wide receivers coach in Brian Hartline. It seems to absolutely crush uh, that Ohio State receiver room. And he, you know, a, a strong player in his own right. So th those guys really respect him there. Um, and then just kind of using that to springboard into when when you do watch the game tape in in especially in kind of the 21, where now you have a lot of guys in this room, a lot of excellent players in this wide receiver room. Um, I think there is sometimes that you can come away a little uninspired at times. If you watch game to game, all 22s uh, play in, play out. Um, and, yeah. You know. Not not saying that you would be down on them, but again, not being the what you were expecting coming in to be like, holy shit, look at this. This is crazy from, you know, end to end here. Um, and, right. And again, like you said, when you look at the numbers, maybe they don't they're not quite as inspiring as you thought. Maybe they would be when with all the hype around this guy. Now, I'm, I'm not I'm not saying all this to shit on him by any means. I'm just trying to provide a little bit of, you know, you do see a little bit when you watch games and, and there are some people who have a little bit like really this guy's the one one and i think you just have so many guys in the in the system at ohio state and the and the coach is kind of telling you hey we're not just going to go in and hey we do have a great guy and got garrett wilson but we have all these other awesome guys too we have you know jackson smith Najigba, who's was PFF's number one graded wide receiver in 2021. Monster. Um, and maybe the first wide receiver off the board this year or the next season. Uh, you have Chris Olave, who considered by many a first rounder, if he would have came out last year, he came back for his senior season. I'm sure Ryan Day wasn't expecting that. Um, then you have Garrett Wilson. And then, you know, all the while, these three guys are keeping Jamison Williams off the field. Uh, who some might consider him as the number one wide receiver this year. So just insane amount of talent is and the point is just that this program is just has so many dudes like you were just saying and these those three guys that are there that played basically all had a thousand yards um alave had 936 and alave and garrett wilson had the bigger touchdown numbers with najigba having the bigger yardage um and and better receiving percentage um on a little bit less than those guys so uh najigba has really planted his flag there and i'm i was just kind of saying that to 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 kind of ease maybe some of your anybody who is having troubles with maybe some of those things because we talked about it a little bit we had not not doubts by any means because what how good's your good Garrett Wilson's good is really fucking good it's yeah. you know it's awesome yeah um, I mean and, and I, I'm not, again I'm not I wasn't saying any of that to throw shade by any means I just wanted to provide some context with maybe why if you do watch game in game out that it's not. When, when it's his turn in Ryan Day's offense to say, hey, we're scheming this part of this for you. Right. It's fucking gang. It's sick. It's gangbusters. Right. It's fucking awesome. He crushes. I completely agree. I mean, I, I started, I made the mistake. I, I've switched up. We've been doing this for like five years now. So I've switched up my process every offseason in terms of how I go about with these prospects. And because there's so much to watch. You've got, we, we now have access to some all 222 tape. We have all of the individual games that YouTube has up there from the broadcast. We have highlight tape. We have interviews. We have stats. We have metrics. All this stuff, right? I started off by watching the All-22s this year. And the All-22s they have of him aren't great stat lines. And like you said, like it, it does get like, it almost lulls you to sleep. It's like play after play where he's not, he's not, the, 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 call, the call's not for him. Right. And I don't believe that they have it set up to where there's like a progression. 
you know? So, like, if it's not his number being called, he just has to kind of clear his guy out, and that's it. And you might see him what appears to be, like, taking plays off or, or acting lackadaisical or not being all the way in. And then and then that can take away from when he finally does get his number called and he pops off a play, you're already just, like, kind of mad because you've been like, and those all-22s take forever, too, to get through. And, and, and with stat lines that they had in them, like, 5 for 50 was a, was a typical kind of stat line for some of those games. And it's just like, oh, man, why? Why is everyone so in on him? But then the more you watch, the more you see those plays when his number's called. Like you said, it's fucking awesome because he's he's borderline unguardable right. when and he when wants you to be. To the highlight tape, it's it's insane. And right. so if he would start there, you'd be like, this is crazy. And then if you right. go to those game by games, you could be low. I think that was low to sleep a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that that was a that was a good point there. Yeah, but you uh-huh. know. I'm with you. Like the good is is so good. You know, I I, I question the 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 quickness at first, but the, the more the more and more I watched of it, it's like he has unquestioned elite short area quickness. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I, again, I like I think that's. I always go back to the, the old Scott Van Pelt. How good's your good? This guy's fucking good. Is is excellent. Um, right. You know, not not I, too I many think, holes think, in his game. Right. All around. Right. Pretty exactly. strong. I think that's a good way to kick off the just kind of going into what he does do instead of just saying he's fucking awesome. Right. Uh, I think the short area quickness is definitely right up there. He like like we've stated a few times, he played both slot and outside wide receiver and was really excelled at both. Uh, showing that's you know, given strong versatility there. He can really look like a technician out there. Yep. Um and I think that's what a lot of people that that route running is is excellent. He has examples of winning in the short, intermediate, and deep routes from, you know, the slot and the outside. Uh, so, you know, you've got to fucking absolutely love that. Again, going back to the technician, again, going to being back that there's not many, very many holes in his game. The start, stop, abrupt movement combined with the good contact balance, making him a tough assignment after the catch. We kind of talked a little bit about that yak ability, but there's so much other going on. I think there could be more. He could be a, a, a yak of the year, but there's so much other going on and Smith the jig was good after the catch and, and Olave super smooth that there's just a lot going on right there. So there's too much know. for any one guy to have the type of college dominator that, that the analytical crowd will just be like, Oh, you gotta take him, you know, cause there's just yeah. so much going on there. There's too many good players. I don't know how they have so many damn good wide receivers. <laughs> it's like in Jigma because both Olave and Garrett Wilson opted out of the Rose bowl. First time in history. Anyone's ever opted out of the Rose bowl, but fine. I'm fine with it. Like, save yourself and, and, and get this money and don't, you know, look what happened with Jamison Williams probably cost himself some millions of dollars. I also understand him playing in the national championship game. Like that's sure. I'm cool with that, that you take, you have to do that. But like the Rose bowl, nobody really cares anymore about anything. That's not a national, like that's not a championship playoff playoff yeah. bracket. Right. Which, which they're expanding that. So like we're in this low period of where bowls are still there, but they're stupid. And, and so they opted out and, and, uh, and Jigba comes out and Marvin Harrison jr. Scores three touchdowns in that game. And they're not even talking about him because in Jigba had like 200 something yards, like yeah. just, it's just too much going on in this offense for you to be like, Oh, look at the production. Look at the, the t- market share, the target share and all this, this, this these words that get thrown around and like they're the smartest thing ever. And like, it's just context. You know, you have to have some context. For sure. And I, that's well, that's what I was, I was trying to paint a little bit of a picture of where they're at in the system, all of those kind of things. Um, but, you know, just kind of getting back to this, to, to what he does, right. the, 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 the short area quickness, like you said, is out, seems outstanding. Uh, the body control and the bend that this guy has, is great when we talked to angelo he said he he called him the best mover in this class which uh angelo is is a big mover kind of how a guy moves and all that kind of stuff yeah the uh um, the the keeny Ken, Kenis, the king of keeny Kenis, Kenneth kinesiology kinesiology yeah. there it is jesus uh but yeah he was going like he was talking he was talking about Traylon burks and how awesome he was and i was like i, I had the that question holstered ready to ask him like is he the best mover does he give you the most movement and he was like oh no that's Garrett Wilson Garrett Wilson is the uh is the best mover in the class and like like you said technician I think is a great word uh, especially with his footwork you, you abrupt is another good word for his change of direction mm-hmm. and then just the ball skills while while the ball's in the air he's a great ball tracker and 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 has the body control you can tell he's played basketball I guess he can go up there and contort his body and and make all these ridiculous catches outside of his frame behind him like and still keep in stride 
side and he just pluck he plucks it out of the air, right? He's a plucker. Right. That's guy I got that's, I, I stole that. I stole that from your thing. notes. I stole okay. that. Okay. I was gonna say I got the exact same thing. Like he could have some handsy handsy snags or as a strong plucker. Mm-hmm. Uh but you know, there was some drops that you saw back there, but almost all of these guys that we've looked at have had a kind of around that same amount of a drop threshold. But you can see that that this he does when you watch the highlights, there are very strong handsy uh, plucking grabs. I'll throw those back up there for your pleasure in case you missed them earlier. But yeah, he's plucking that ball out of the air. And like you said, you know, I think he could be a yak of the year nominee. Uh, but but he's not a, he's not the wiener because there's just there was just not not enough for for that to happen. But I mean, and then the the last little note that I would make um, is that he doesn't necessarily have an extra gear, uh, but he's I think he's fast enough. And there's like so many long plays. Like he has a long he has like longs of 77, 65, 57, 56, 47, 47, 42, 40, like uh, like 10 or more plays over 30 yards, right? Just like uh just like our boy Traylon Burks just busting off long long ass plays right. and and with the yak like he can compensate for not having, you know, that elite speed, which you know, everybody wants, but it's just it's not that many people have it, right? Right. And I, this is that's I got that kind of at the end of my stuff as well. Like maybe not the most outstanding long speed and in high school, they were putting him at about a four, six, one. Um, and then they're, they're saying that he, maybe he'll be in the four fours. Now some people are saying four fives, right? You know, I, I, think really four know, five. the, I think four five, I think four five is fair. Is good enough for me. And, and at the end of the day, like how many of those guys with that outstanding long speed really fucking exist that are, you know, Tyreek, uh, but that are maybe, actually you know, good at football too. For, right. There's for every one of those guys, there's a bunch of guys who speed guys like John Ross. And I know John Ross is extremely fast, but I'm just saying there's a bunch of guys who, are really fast who can't make that speed count for shit. Right. Um, and Garrett Wilson can make what he has count. Um, and while he may not be as fast as Tyree kill, he's plenty fast. Um, and the game speed is, is, is really strong. So I'm not even, I don't even really care what that long speed comes back as. Cause there's, there's plenty of examples of him knowing how to get that deep defender off of his game with his route running ability and that, that nice burst um, and, and being able to, get those deep balls um, and again being good in the contested catch can help him in the red zone as, as well as that abrupt start stop uh, you know quickness that he has uh, the, the only other thing that I would say is that um, when you do watch all the games I would say that maybe while it can be awesome like you see in that Maryland game where he's outside and, and maybe the, the coverage is a little pressed down on him if you watch like the Penn State game maybe he does get caught up in a little too much of when he's that the release is really good but he might get caught up in too much stuttering at that at mm-hmm. that quick release point where he's trying to break you down and, and get going where sometimes i would just like to see him just take one and go like just get out right. of there where like it did seem like a little bit of david bell like he doesn't he doesn't play that game like he's just he's fucking going yeah um, I, I hear you it did seem like there were times especially in penn state and maybe a couple other games where he he, he was struggling to get off press coverage but then it's like or, or, or just tight man coverage in general, and I, you know, I don't know. It's hard to it's hard to evaluate that because it's like, well, if the play wasn't being called towards him, he's not really trying to separate. He's just trying to get his guy out of the way. So it's Keep like, his guy, yeah. When, but, but but when he, you know, and but there are some examples of him where the, where he's getting targeted and he can't get off the the press coverage for for all those spectacular catches. There are some some drops and right. some struggles, but like for the most part, sure. You but that's with there. everyone. But right. For the most part, this dude, student Merks. You right. Know? And so, again, you can move him all over. And at the end of the day, he just looks like he has that 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 it factor that that, it, it, that when you see it and you could really see it in spurts when when it is his turn and his time to go. Um, and and I, I can understand all the love and the platform that people are putting him on you know, again with the route running and the other strengths and abilities that you see, like you could you, you, he could be one of those guys that you project that maybe even pops more in the NFL like you know Stefan Diggs kind of comes to mind a little bit which I'm sure people will comp him to a decent amount but I feel like he could really take his game to it to another like elite level at at the next level with the the coaching and the amount of balls that he would get his way and and being involved 
in an offense and being able to be moved around uh, properly. So right, and the fact again, that there are progressions, right? You can't take right. plays off in the NFL. They might not. They, the, the, these NFL quarterbacks make two, three, four reads, and you ha- you have to be ready. It's not just okay. That's my main assignment, or I'll go to this check down. Like you know, so I, I think he, I, you know, can he turn it on all the time? I, you know, I think so. Like I, yeah, for so, sure. Brad, what do you think? All righty then. <laughs> Is he the number one? I don't know. Well, t- TBD, uh, we're going to be doing some stuff over on our Patreon with all that kind of stuff, and we'll be doing plenty of mocks uh, to to kind of talk about that all. But uh, we're digesting all this information and stuff. I don't like to try to put a stamp on it. He's definitely Ooh, where's he? Where different. would he rank against next year's wide receivers or last year's wide receivers or last year's yeah, rookie class? Like it's still January still, guys, right? And and like we don't know where these guys are going to go. There is going to be a combine. Someone's probably going to get injured. Like there's going to be good landing spots, bad landing spots. We're going to determine whether or not that matters. Like there's just so much time, you know. And 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 another thing is like. You know, definitely hit us in the comments with any of this stuff. You know, I'm down to I'm down to speculate with the rest of them. We don't really do much of that on the show because it's it's kind of not really worth it. Like, there's really no point to it. But people love doing it. Um, but like, I think there's so many so many people out there right now giving advice, pretending like they know everything about all these prospects, and I just don't believe you. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't <laughs> believe that you know everything yeah, about we get all the prospects. Of how can you know these guys yeah. inside and out already? Like we just basically found out who was even coming out, which I get that if you're just doing college all the time, maybe you'd be ready to go. And that's why we bring people on like Angelo, because we know he's dialing into those things every year where we're mostly focusing on the NFL. But like if you're listening to these dudes and they're doing these rookie mocks and shit and telling you everything and telling you staunchly what it is, they I just don't believe them. How do you know? <laughs> You can't know yet. And, like, that's why, you know, we're just – we put in all this work and we've only gotten through three prospects. But, like, we know these guys inside and out, on and off the field, and, like, now I feel armed with enough information to go into the next prospect and then yeah, and, and then that, the next step and get to fi- finally get to a rookie draft and make educated decisions based on my team and the talent available. And, and you know – good about evaluating the, the value of these players and where they should go and what's good value and what's bad value because at the end of the day that's really – but the most important part about this whole thing moving forward, like, hey, yeah, maybe once after the draft and those other things, if you want to say, where do these guys rank against Devontae Smith? Because maybe I can trade one of these picks at one five. And I know that, hey, these are the kind of the two or three guys that usually go around pick five. And maybe I would trade two or three of those guys for uh, Devonta Smith, but um, and like for the said, record, I'll take Devonte over all the dudes we've done so far. I mean, let me get Devonta <laughs> like Smith. It. I like uh, it. Just just needs to be targeted more. That's it. These dudes a uh, fucking stud, and probably not gonna have Jalen Hurts next year based on that playoff performance. Feel like it was a little bit in flux, but now, like, I don't know. Like, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? I did maybe see a little bit of something today where they were talking about that he may, might have earned another shot, but also he did not earn out. another shot. But yeah, I could also no. see them. But, I mean, I still, even then, Smith, Smith was pretty stocks, startable though. for you, and he's still yeah, a young-ass dude, and we're playing fucking Dynasty, and the Slim sure. Reaper, give me that man. But, anyway, yeah, we're going to no, get into I, uh, more of that stuff, like, over on our uh, over on the Discord and the Patreons uh, as we go through this offseason. We're going to start doing some rankings. We're just not quite there yet, so we got to let it yeah. breathe. we got to do our due diligence. We've run extra long on this show. Anything else you want to add, big uh, Case? Oof. I had some things, but I forgot them because we were rambling. So Ramble. go ahead and subscribe. Hit us in the comments down to down to really chat about anything. No, no. Uh, and and again, if you're a, if you only do college and and you're strictly Ohio State, you probably do know more about this prospect than me. But like we're we're saying, we know him inside and out from. We, we've done our due diligence for the most part. Like you, you might know some other little things about him or, or be like, no, he does this, this or this because of this, this and this. And it's like, well, I, I'm not going to ever go probably that deep on it because I don't have that much time. Uh, but if you're strictly an Ohio State guy or strictly only diving into debt, hit us up. Really Let us know. Let us NFL. know what yeah, we missed, you sure. know. But yeah. uh, but if you're listening to a dynasty analyst tell you everything about all these prospects already, I'm just not buying it. I'm <laughs> just not buying it. But uh, we appreciate y'all. If you're listening on the podcast, Spotify has a rating system now. So please go hit us with that five stars on the Spotify or the iTunes. That would be greatly appreciated. Please 
like, subscribe, notifications, all that good stuff on the YouTube. Uh, we appreciate you for joining us, and uh, I think we're going to maybe hit a little Olave next since we're on this Ohio State kick. And uh, yeah. I'm dying to get into some David Bell, but Olave could be next, so sure. I mean, I feel like we got to just roll right into Olave, you know? Sure. Already, he's already sure. had the presence on the field, and you kind of was seeing him over there on the other side, and it was probably popping and making plays. I feel like the All-22s have – Olave and Garrett Wilson. I feel like they were probably Garrett or Olave games that we saw from yeah. the Garrett Wilson side. So I'm, I'm excited For to get sure. into Olave. I think he's a smooth dude and, and, and looking forward to seeing him. But uh, let us know who, yeah. you, who else you'd like us to see. Got some Wandale requests yeah, and, and whatnot. Sure. I'll, so. I'll, I'm, inter- I'm interested in him. I lost yeah. my light halfway through, so I'm trying a little light at the end here for you, Jay Wayne. It's not bad. <laughs> no, nah, it's all good. Stay. It's Should all good. Hey, remotely we do what we got to do. Yeah, yeah. We'll be back right, in guys. studio for your pleasure. Appreciate, appreciate. Yep. Peace.